So, I got the urge to come up and do an art journal page. Um, I wasn't originally going to film it at all. And then I just thought, do you know what, I'll just turn the camera on and I'll just I'll just chat and do stream of consciousness. Um, so, Ian's also here with me. Say hello. Afternoon everyone, good morning, good evening. <laughs> um, so he's in the room as well, so you'll hear background noises coming from him because he's also working on a couple of projects himself. So the idea for today's art journal page, it's just one of those things where I just wanted to sit down and just glue bits of paper down um, with no kind of rhyme or reason. And then I'm going to paint over the top. So I've got this sheet of, I think it's a Tim Holtzy one, I'm not sure, I think it is. It's the one with all the travel labels on. So it's a, a kind of what I call an orphan sheet now. It's fallen out of the pack. <laughs> I know, poor thing. Um, so I'm just going to use it. And the only reason I'm using it is because I like the colours in it. I'm in the mood for some kind of um, reds and, and ochres and that kind of vintagey style colours today. Um, I don't know why. Shall we just leave that as a bit of a gap? So we've got a bit of texture in there. I think so. Um, <clears throat> so today's art journal page is going to be a bit of a... I'm going to be just as interested to see how it turns out as you are because I've got no idea what I'm going to be creating. Um, and I don't kind of do this kind of thing very often where I just get the urge to go and sit down and do something. Um, the weather's changed from being extremely hot and lovely to being very cold and pooey. And that's a technical term, that. Yes, that's one of your technical terms. It is. It's a technical term for it's very windy and it's raining. And if it was Latin, it'd be Puius Windius. Puius Windius, indeed. Or is he a Roman emperor? Quite possibly could have been. I'm going to stick that one over the top there. I'm going to do one more, I think, there. I could have glued this down with matte medium, but it's a thickish kind of paper, so I'm not. <laughs> That's my only kind of reason behind doing what I'm doing. Uh, and then I'm going to put one piece, just one piece. I'm using a lot of this glue stick. It's good if I've got plenty more. Whenever I go over to um, my favourite craft art stroke supply shop. Art from the heart! In Harrogate, which is good old Diarevely's place because um, these are the Dilusions Creative Diary glue sticks um, I always stock up on these because they're very very um, inexpensive um, and they're extremely extremely handy and I tend to buy them in I tend to buy them in bulk so there's what another five in there um, and I've just thrown one away because it was empty or finished, if you like. So yeah, I buy them in bulk because they're very, very useful and they're small enough as well if you have a little travel art kit to throw one in. So the page is curly. It was an old page in this art journal. This is a Strathmore Multimedia journal. Um, they've all got oxide sprays on them clips. Um, and it had something that had like an experimental bit on it so I painted over it but you can't see it now. Well you can just maybe just see it. This bit's just showing through. I gave it four or five coats of gesso um, just because I got rid of what was on there. Okay so now I've got those glued down I want some olive Dina Wakey paint. Uh, I'm sure I thought I had an ochre in this paint, but I don't. It's olive. Well, that will work. I might mix a little bit of lemon in with that, just because maybe a bit of elephant as well. Keeping it on that kind of warmish spectrum. Cheddar, maybe. What's that down there? That's penny, that's copper. I don't Is that colours? I know. Elephants. I, know. Um, I think 
You get elephant grey. Oh, of course, yeah. Um, I so think that's also a Farron Ball colour, isn't it? Is it? Elephant. Right, so I've got Sedona, Cheddar, Olive. I've got Lemon, but I'm not sure about Lemon. Um, and I've got some Elephant just for some kind of tones in. Now, I did somewhere have a brain. But, 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 where's it gone? Has somebody tied it up? It will be me. Well, no, probably not. I did have a break because I used it recently to do some master motherboards. I didn't want to use the big one. If you've got a big one, you might as well use it. Well, there is that. Oh, uh, what, what, oh it's there. So that's, that's the big one. And I've got a small one, but there also was another one with a red handle. Well, that seems to have vanished. Oh, I remember that one. Oh, there. there it is, there you go. So we have an array of brayers. Um, I want a small one. Um, this speedball one, which is kind of a useful one, um, it, it sometimes when you push too hard, the handles splay apart and the roller drops out. <laughs> I know. But it's <coughs> slightly smaller than that speedball one. I'm not sure what brand this one is because there's nothing on it that tells you what it is. Um, and that's the large speedball. That's a biggie. That's a good one for doing um, gel plates. If you're that way inclined. So I'm gonna I'm gonna use I'm gonna try and use this one. Uh, but I won't press too hard. I won't press too hard, I do promise. Right, scratch paper, a little bit of scratch paper. A little bit of space. Okay, so let's start with the the darker colours, the red, the Sedona. Let's drop some of that on, and then I'm just going to gently. This paper's not exactly straight, is it? See, that's a real nice kind of. Um, I'll say tomatoey red. But it is. Now, I made the mistake of saying Sedona was in, um, I think I said it was in Arizona last time I used this paint, but it's not, I don't think. I think somebody corrected me and said, no, it's in California. Um, so, my knowledge of American geography is limited. It's very limited. I and mean, it's limited to the places where we've been, and also limited to the places that we've seen on the telly. So, yeah, very, very limited. Now, you can see some light like, circles appearing on there. That's because that's the layer of paint that's under the gesso. <laughs> so even if you try and hide it with gesso, sometimes things start coming up. I know, it is a bit spooky. So just bear that in mind if you think, oh I'll just paint over an old page that I don't want anymore. Sometimes things come to the surface even when you don't want them to. That paper's starting to wrinkle a bit now. I'm going to get rid of that clip. Right, now I'm going to go that way. Like I did with the motherboards, masterboards, I don't want to go vertically. I want to stick to horizontal. And I hope that's in focus. Am I in focus? Can you read that? Yes, it's in focus. Um, <clears throat> trying to avoid, ver uh, not verticals, diagonals. So talking of diagonals, we watched Mary Poppins Returns last night. Oh! The Revenge. Mary Poppins The Revenge as we call it. Um, and I don't know whether you've seen it, but yes, Emily Blunt, fantastic, captures the spirit of Julie Andrews brilliantly. But she, um, she took the kids, the Banks children, the new set of Banks children, uh, which are the children of one of the original Banks children from the Julie Andrews film. Um, no spoilers. Um, 
and she took them to visit um, her cousin, played by Meryl Streep, and she took them to a place which was very, very reminiscent, bearing in mind that they are magical creatures, Mary Poppins. Um, it was very, very reminiscent. I thought it was a documentary. Diagon Alley. It was, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I said to Ian, it, it, it could actually be, you know, it, like Mary Poppins could have gone to Hogwarts. <laughs> it would have been funny if somewhere in the, um, in all the, the films and that kind of stuff on one of the school like boards for sports or Quidditch or awards and stuff, Mary Poppins' name appeared. Mm. Right, so that was the lemon, by the way. So, and you also notice, if you've been paying attention, that I'm not drying either between layers. Is that good or bad? Well, because I'm putting it down with the brayer, it, it tends to go down quite thin layers. Right. Um, so therefore, you also get to the point where your um, your layers are drying before you actually apply in the next one. Right, so we've done Sedona, we've done Cheddar, and we've now done the Lemon. So I'm now going to add in some of that olive. And I'm not cleaning the, um, the brayer either. These are nice colours together. Nice, nice colours. I'm going to go this way. This time. Right, it's starting to skid because the paper you see, this paper is is buckling a little bit, and there's that much paint on now, it's actually starting to skid a little. I'm trying to get as close to that middle as I can. And I'll just, just some of those areas. Let's just work on that area down there, because there's not enough paint on that area down there. That's better. Started to push it a little bit hard now, so the bray is actually starting to splay apart. But it's creating up a really nice kind of grungy background, which is perfect for what we want. So now let's bring out that grey colour, and I'm going to add a little bit of that. And I'm not going to go, I'm not going to go mad, just to add. A few little highlights. Okay, I'm happy with that background the way it is at the moment. I'm going to leave the brayer to dry on its own because I never clean my brayers. I do want that dry before I do the next thing though. So just bring out the heat gun, and give it a once over. Okay. So, that's dry. If you want to, you could always glue pages together just to give them that little bit more um, bit of rigidity, if you like. I sometimes do glue my pages together. So what did I do with the glue stick? Is that the one? Right, so I'm just going to go around the edges. There we go. I'm just going to glue those couple of pages together. Yeah, it just gives us a little bit more rigidity to the page. Because we're using acrylic paint, it doesn't soak through particularly on the type of paper that's on this art journal. Right, so the next thing I'm going to do is just grab a pencil and I'm going to do a sketch, just a quick kind of mm -mm 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 -mm. 
mm, maybe not quite as high. <coughs> About there. Do some shoulders. And then just bring that down to about there. Okay, so little brush. Clean and then get some white gesso. Now the colours will shine through on this. So all I'm doing is dulling it down a little bit. So if you're not very good at drawing human figures, doing a kind of stylized, what I call like the, the fashion industry kind of thing, where you've got really stylized shapes depicting the human form, works really, really well. And you can get away with almost, almost anything. Because you don't have to be perfect. Oh, my tummy. And I've had lunch. That's not good. That will do. Did I nearly put my brush in my coffee then? That wouldn't have been a good thing, would it? Wouldn't have been pretty. Oh, my tummy is rumbling something chronic. That will do, that will do, that will do. Right, so I'm going to bring out a pen and I'm going to start drawing round the edges just to kind of make it stand out a bit but I'm not trying to do perfect lines I want them to be sketchy just give it a little bit of form So start adding in sketchy lines. Just to kind of balance out the black that I've done around there. I'm not doing them all the way around. I'm not perfectly outlining just helps to fill in there we go just kind of helps to bring everything make it pop a little bit so now I want to add some um, mark making. So what have I got to hand? I've got some bubble wrap. I've got a this left a little bubble wrap mitt. Haha, <laughs> that's cute. I'm not going to use it like that though. So let's tear that. Keep that other piece to one side. I've got some scissors there. Put that into four. I 
that's the side with the bubbles. That's good. Okay, so a small brush again. Get that white gesso back. Give it a shake because I want some on the lid. I use the lids, the underside of the lids as palettes. Paint the bubble wrap. It's a great way to get some texture for little or no cost whatsoever because we've all got bits of bubble wrap kicking around the house somewhere from things that we've ordered off the interwebs or from old um, envelopes that have come through from Amazon or something like that. Lay that over. Because I'm not using a huge amount of paint. Quite forgiving. Now let's try and keep it going the same direction. Push down, peel off. I think one more piece. I'm going to try and get that so it goes. There. Not really showing them there very much, but you can still see a little bit of it. I'm just looking at the page now and I just get the feeling that it needs something more in that top left hand corner. Just about there. And if we've got some paint left on that, I might just try and go over that bit there. That's better. Okay. Happy with that for the time being. Let's drop that brush into some water. And then do some more basic mat making. Let's just get this dry first though. Okay, I think that figure is a little bit too um, too white so I'm going to bring some of that cheddar back I'm going to get a very very small amount where's that little brush gone and I'm going to dry the brush as much as I can and just take some of the paint and I'm going to just use really fine kind of brush strokes just to dust if you like down over the figure just to kind of turn it in a little and if you want to you can bring in one of the other colours I'm going to get the olive because that's kind of got some of that colouring that I wanted originally that ochre um, and I know that if I mix the green with the orange, I'm going to get a little bit of a brownie colour. That's fine. It's still a kind of warm colour. There we go. It still works. So just dry brushing the colour on really gently. Just helps to kind of blend it back into the background. And if you wanted to bring another bit of that red in, tiniest of amounts. And 
I'm just getting it on the tips of the brush. Almost, well, almost like you're shading it a little bit. Yeah. Okay. So now I want some black. So we'll use black gesso just as good as anything else. Just, oops, I am throwing that brush all over the place. Okay, so I want... That'll do. So this is just one of those little um, plastic um, math sets that you can buy for kids to take to school and you can pick them up pretty much anywhere Ooh, pen drilling so I'm going to run it through the black and then I'm going to create some black lines And do the same on this side. Put a bit more black on that paper there. And then I'm going to turn it this way and see if we can do It's doing all that gardening still hurts. It does. <laughs> Not as good as I want Oh dear. It's looking good. Thank you. Let's put some of that black there. And then just pick it up at the edge. You know when you put something in safe? And can't find it again. Ever so safe. It's yeah. Really safe. I'm going to try and catch the edge of the figure. There we go. Just like that like that and then I can just give that a quick wipe off because it's plastic and then that can go back away. It's quite mid-century modern huh? Do you think? Hmm. Is it quite urban? I don't know what that means, it sounds like it could be trendy. <coughs> urban meaning like part of a city? Yes. <coughs> with that one. So you kind of get the impression of either figures as part of a crowd or maybe buildings with structures scaffolding that kind of thing the white dots maybe kind of lights in buildings in the distance kind of like that that's what springs to mind when I look at it anyway not necessarily what my intention was but there you go now then <coughs> So, somewhere I had, in one of these drawers on my desk, a set of, there we go, a set of stamps, stamps, and I've got somewhere some ink, that's memento, that's not necessarily the one that I want though, it stays on or something like that, there we go, <coughs> normally have it handy. And I need a little acrylic block. 
So let me just see if I can go and find one. It shouldn't take too long because I know exactly where they are normally. There they are. Everything in its place and a place for everything. Okay, so we'll just have a small one. Haha, <laughs> fresh. I like that. Can't remember what I did that on though. Um, there we go. That's oh dear. so many acrylic blocks, it's unbelievable. That will do. Over the years, I amassed a huge collection of acrylic blocks. Look at that. I can build a house with those. Okay, so I want to do. Is that a C? Yes, it is. So let's just spell the word that I want to create. I want to create the word city life. Um, <clears throat> is that a J? I think it is a J. But there's only one alphabet in this, so I'm going to have to make it up out of uh, upper and lower case. So you have to bear with me while I hunt out the letters that I'm looking for. There's that one. I need a T. It'll be in there somewhere. There's a Y there, so that can be for city. There's a T. So we'll go city. And then we'll do, is there a capital L there somewhere? It might pay me actually to buy a second set of these stamps. A, it helps if you lose one. There's the L. So if we can find a lowercase y, which is there, so we'll swap that and put that as a capital there. And then we'll want a F, don't we? A F. There. So that means somewhere in, in here there's a capital I. I could cheat, couldn't I, and do that. Let's do that. Let's cheat. There's nothing better than cheating. Right, so... Stick those down onto my block. Get my stays on. Let's ink this baby up. I love the smell of the stays on ink pads. If you're not a fan of almond, you won't. And I think I'm going to put it along the edge of the, my character's body. Give it a bit of a push. So you're going to get one chance at this. There we go. I'll peel all those off later. And there you go. I like that. City life. I want to do some splatters though. <laughs> Just after the fact. Let's do some splatters. Let's do splatters. We like splatters. Splatters are good. Fan brush. Water. Thank you. Bit of black. Let's mix it up. Let's get a little bit more black paint in there. I wouldn't mind some bigger splatters, some heavier splatters. That's it. Perfect. It makes a change me not getting all of my hands, but there you go. That will do. Let me just quickly get it dry. Okay, so <clears throat> that's all dry. So if you look at your writing and you're not really happy with <clears throat> the way that you've got the impression, you can always get your black pen afterwards and go back in and tidy those letters back up. Oh, 
Although it probably would have been better to start on the left and work your way that way so you don't smudge them. <coughs> yeah, I know. That really does depend on whether or not you're left or right handed though, doesn't it? <laughs> and again, without journaling, it's really how much you want to put into it. You know, you could have just left it like that if you wanted to, or I could have just left it like that if I wanted to, um, <clears throat> but I thought. I'd rather just have those letters a little bit more prominent, a little bit more defined. paint again, um, black gesso once more. This time I'm going to use a lid. So I've got some little misty water bottle-y kind of things. Uh, I always label mine up because that's got water in and that one's got alcohol in so I don't get them mixed up because they do look very very similar. So I'm going to just put that black paint in there and then I'm going to do a couple of kind of circular black marks. Just introduce them. Oop couple of places, even just cross them over. And I think just a couple more. One there. One there. Just to kind of link those two pages together. And then I'll just give that a quick wipe over with a bit of kitchen roll. Put that back on my bottle top. Get rid of that, put the lid back on there and then do I need to have a board around there? No I don't think I necessarily do. So I think I'm going to call that a day. So grab my pen once more and then I'm going to sign it and I'm just going to put that it was done at some point in May. There we go. So that's my kind of non-planned, ad hoc, if you like, art journal page for today. I hope you did enjoy watching that. If you did, please remember to give it a thumbs up, share the video with your friends. And if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel already, you can do so by clicking the button at the end of the video. That's all from me for now. I will see you all again very, very soon. Bye for now. I'd like to say a huge thank you to all of my angels, because without you, these videos would not be possible. Thank you.